Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on adding an environmental fog to a scene in V-Ray for Rhino. We're going to be working with this scene here which is a small building nestled amongst some cut out trees which I've applied as material to these vertical planes, these green and pink planes here. You can see in the rendered view this appears as a kind of collection of trees with the building in the middle and we're currently rendering this view here, this EL4 view which we'll be testing with this environmental fog. Now we're going to start by opening up the V-Ray Asset Editor. This can be found by either clicking on this icon in the toolbar or going to V-Ray and the Asset Editor there. And we're going to go into the Settings option, open up the right hand window by clicking on this little tab at the side and turning on this Volumetric Environment option here. Now under Type we're going to select the Environmental Fog and we're going to start just with the default parameters here. We've got a white color on the fog, a black emission, an emission multiplier of one, a distance of a thousand and a height of zero there. And we're going to start with that in our view and we'll render out an interactive renderer so we can test and see what these parameters do as we're rendering out our scene. Now, as this loads up, you can see here that we've got a very low level fog added to the image at the moment. It's quite grey and dense and it's just currently along the floor. And the reason it's so low is due to this height parameter. Now this height controls the effective height of the fog and my landscapes currently sits just below zero on my kind of x-axis or z-axis in my Rhino model. So we need to up that height in order for the fog to come up the model. So if we set this up to 2000 for instance you'll then see that the fog rises up to meet that level. So that height parameter controls the height of the fog in the scene. Now the units I'm typing in here are based upon the units of my model. So I'm working in millimeters in this scene. So 2000 is equivalent to two meters or 2000 millimeters. Now the reason the fog is still quite thick at the moment is due to this distance tab. This distance tab reflects the distance from the camera to the thickest point of the fog. So at the moment, there's only a meter distance between the camera and that kind of thickest point of the fog. So all the fog is appearing very thick at the moment. So if we up that value to 20,000, i.e. 20 meters in this case, you can see that we've now got a gradient between the camera and that 20 meter mark until the fog reaches its thickest point. So we can play around with that value to change the kind of gradient of that fog up there as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to up the height to allow the fog to completely eclipse our model. So we're going to put this up to 50 meters. And you can see now that the fog is very high, but because it's so high, it also has the knock-on effect that it's blocking the light in our scene. And we've suddenly got a very dark scene. Now, in order to keep the light in our scene and also keep the fog at the same time, we're going to need to turn on this scatter GI option. And what this does is once we turn it on, it allows the light to scatter into the scene in between these particles of fog, effectively bouncing off the fog particles and therefore brightening up the scene a little bit more. So you can see that this is now kind of brightened up the scene. The render time takes a little bit longer for this because there's a few more calculations for it to do but we're starting to kind of see some of the objects a bit more visibly in the scene. Now, the reason it's still quite dark and misty is because this distance tab is still too low. So we need to ramp up this distance to a higher figure in order to get a better gradient on our fog. So as you can see, as we up that, the scene gets brighter and the objects become slightly clearer. And now it's just a case of just adjusting this distance parameter until we've got a nice level of fog in our scene that's not blocking the objects too much. So I think maybe a 90,000 millimeters or a 90 meters distance should be quite good for this. And you can see now that the objects are coming into view, but we've got this gradual fog now in the scene. And the more objects you have in the distance, the more these would be occluded by the fog as well. So you can play around with that parameter depending on the sort of scene and the distances you're working with in the scene. Now, I've kept the fog color as a white for now because it keeps the fog a nice kind of clear color and you don't get that smoky look to it. I also haven't adjusted the emission value because this will add a kind of emission or a light to the fog and will really brighten up the scene. So unless you kind of want glowing fog for any reason, you wouldn't really add an emission to it if you just wanted a standard kind of environmental fog in your scene there. 
So that was a very quick tutorial on adding environmental fog to a scene in V-Ray. I hope you found this useful. And please have a look at some of the other videos if you want to look at how to create this sort of forest scene from scratch and scatter landscape objects within a V-Ray scene as well.